Okay, so the there's this thing called an animated GIF. You've probably seen these before, right? They're all over the web. Um, they're actually, I would have to say that they're both increasing and decreasing in popularity. They're not used quite as much as uh, the meat and potatoes of, of website design. They're usually now just basically a 15 second video without any audio, hopefully, that will make you laugh. Um, but I wanted to show you what Photoshop can do with uh, animation. It will actually animate GIFs for you. Uh, in fact, it will do most of the work that you need. If you open up Photoshop, the first thing that you're going to need is the timeline uh, window opened up. Go under window and choose timeline. They're alphabet alphabetical order. Now this timeline doesn't really do anything until you have a file open on the screen. So I've got to create a new file. I'll make it something like 200 by 800. I, it doesn't matter what the dimensions are. You can really just play around and do whatever you want. So now I've got a little banner advertisement size type thing. Um, and the timeline window, it changed just a little bit. See how it says create frame animation down here? Actually, I bet yours says create video timeline. Uh, what you have to do is click this little drop down box and change it to create frame animation. Oh, and then you have to click the create frame animation button. This is a weird step. This was introduced in the last version of, of Photoshop. It did not exist before that. It just automatically looked like this version. Uh, so this frame version is for creating um, uh, animated GIFs, and the other one is actually f allows Photoshop to work with full video files, which I really don't recommend. Photoshop's not that great at it. It's just something they've sort of tacked on, and I don't think it's it's not Photoshop's strong suit. Premiere and After Effects are good for that. So what I want to do is uh, show you how this this animation stuff works. It is almost exactly like working with um, hand-drawn cell animation like The Simpsons or old Saturday morning cartoons. That's exactly what this is. You're going to create a whole bunch of frames. The computer is going to play them really fast. So it looks like it's animated. So in order to do this, what you do is you take your, your file, your, a layer, and you move it, and you take a snapshot. You move it, you take a snapshot. Doo -doo -doo. I'm trying to do this. This is going to look awful because I'm doing this the hard way. I'll show you how to do it the easy way in a second. Do not do it this way. No, it's just going to do weird stuff. So it kind of vibrates through the, the page really fast um, and looks awful. But I've got these 12 frames now. I'm actually going to take all these and throw them in a the little trash can. So what if when I just yeah, you can do all that. The better way to do this is to... Um, I'm going to create a, a second frame, and I'm going to move this guy here at, at my destination point, wherever it is I want this to, to stop at. And I can get the computer to make up the frames that go in between. Yeah. If you've ever played with uh, Flash, this is called tweening. Just write that on the world's court. It's in between. In betweening. It'll come up with the stuff that goes in between these frames. That's a fun little thing. It's this button right here. It looks like uh, a bunch of little circles fading into each other. And you get this window. How many frames do you want it to be? I'll do something kind of awful. 20 frames. Um, and boom. Now my page. Now it's all of these frames. Um, not entirely, because what I could do is, in my second frame, I could set the opacity of this down to zero. So it's in in the second frame, it's invisible, but it's right, right there. And then if I tween this. It's actually going to fade out. Ooh. 
And honestly, there's no reason why we couldn't have this... Let me bring the opacity back up. Opacity down. Oops, create a new frame. And then this one... There we go. So between frames one and frame one, where'd he go? There he is. Come back here. Okay, frame one he's there, frame two he's there. I will tween ten frames in between there. And then between here and the last one, I'll tween another ten frames. Oops. So I sort of did two tweens. Tweens, yes. Now if you want to do something like um, make this ball squish when it bounces, which would be pretty uh, common to do in, in animation. Um, I'm going to attempt to make that happen. Why would you want to do this in Photoshop instead of Flash? Because uh, it's actually not quite as complicated and it'll automatically output a GIF for you okay. that you can optimize with yeah flash will be all FLV you need the flash plug in it may export to a GIF will it do that? Okay. Um, I don't want you to learn another program in this class as part of it <laughs> but if you know flash yeah I'd say that's gonna be much much more powerful this is for really really simple stuff okay so let me see if I can make this Okay, so right now it's actually let me do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna have this ball drop and then get squishy. So I want it to go down here and then I want to do a nice little transform on it so it does some little thing like this and then bounce back up and then go back up to the top. Um, so at the very least I can oops, create frame animation create a second frame put him down here there we go and I can tween a couple of frames in there I'm just going to do like five okay so it'll drop just fine now if I wanted to squish the problem is that if I take this shape and I squish him I use the transformation tool he squishes in every single frame that's not what I want. What it means I'll have to do is create a duplicate of this shape and squish the duplicate. Um, No, what I'm going to end up doing is I have to go back into these frames and turn off this little guy. And in this frame, just that, what is he doing? Oh, I turned on Unify, that's why. <coughs> this is the long way where I, <laughs> I, turn, I turn off the squishy one in every frame. But you can also do this thing where you click Unify and it will try to match that object's opacity and frames and all the different things it can across this one. I'll then ununify it, go to the last one, and turn it back on. It's really annoying because as soon as it adds the squishy part, it suddenly becomes... Um, it adds it to every single frame, which is really annoying. Um, but then I can simply... Oops. Add a new frame, turn this guy off, turn this guy back on. Add another frame. And he's going to go, he's not going to bounce quite as high this time. And I'll do that over th three frames. Let's we'll see what that does. It is going way too fast. So you can slow it down. 
if you may have noticed that underneath of each one it says how many seconds duration that's how what pause do you want in between each one if you click on the first one and then shift click on the last one there we go then you can set them all at the same time and I'll put a point two delay on it oh god now it's really slow hold on let me do let's see point one that's a little better um, you're not going to get great animation out of this. This is not going to be smooth and fluid and perfect. This is meant for really cheap and cheesy animations. Don't expect to make your own cartoon out of this. They didn't do it as animated GIFs. They used Flash to begin with. So if you if you need shapes to do something, the actual shape to change, each one's going to have to be its own layer, and you'll turn it on and off. It's it's kind of annoying, um, but tweening will help you with that. Um, and then you can adjust the the um, the frame rate. You can also choose how many times it loops. So I can set this to loop forever. Really exciting, huh? Um, and then after the last one, I could set it to that one waits for two seconds. So it gets to the end, stop. And then it's going to keep going. I don't know if you'd want to do that, but you could. Um, probably if you were making an animated uh, banner advertisement, you want it to scroll through your little thing and then stay on your message for a few seconds and then repeat over again. That might be a use, use for that. Then once you get to this point, you've got to save it out for the web. Now, since this guy is only black and white, uh, JPEG is not going to cut it. I need a GIF. Um, yeah, it's letting me know how many colors I need. I could probably get away with like, probably get away with less than that. Eight colors on this. It's stuck at the end there. Yeah, I have seven point two six kilobytes. That's because it's there's not much to this one. But the way GIF saves, uh, especially its animation, is this is actually 13 GIF files all stacked together into one GIF file, essentially. Um, so every frame of animation does add a lot more to your file size. Um, but this one is going to be 7.26 kilobytes when I'm done. I just save it as bounce.gif. I can load it in a web browser and it, it runs perfectly. I do like the squish at the end. That does seem to make it look a little bit more professional. Um, you'll also want to, when you're done, do a regular save as and save it as your PSD file, your Photoshop document, so that you have all of those. That's about it. That's really all there is to, to animation. So I do have a series, a uh, small couple of uh, an example for you to, to try out. Um, these are the files that you use, and this is a fairly large zip file that has uh, some videos in it that you'll need to follow. They're for an older version of Photoshop, so it does not have how you change this into the frames timeline. Um, so just be aware of that, that you have to open up a file there'll be a little but a little drop down that says change to frames animation and then you have to click on that to get this to work but really the videos take like 45 minutes to complete they're pretty simple and that's what I got for you this week cool